And welcome back to the No State Project. I'm your host, Mark Stevens, author of the Intercontinental Cult Classic, Adventures in Legal Land, where black is white and white is black, and other shocking discoveries from America's courtroom. This is the No State Project, where we actually define freedom. We don't just talk about freedom and liberty. We actually define it. And I, of course, will paraphrase Andrew J. Galambos that it is 100% control of your life and property, 100% of the time, and zero control over somebody else's life and property. And I think that pretty much sums it up, don't you think, Kurt? Right. Zero percent that, of the time on that yeah. last part. Yeah, you, you have no control, unless, of course, it is voluntarily given because we know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, some people may do that. Uh, you know, they have their own little sexual practices and, and whatnot, <laughs> and, and, and that's fine. So uh, as long as it's 100 percent voluntary, uh, not an issue. Uh, and, and what we talk about is government. You know, we're going to have, uh, and our guest, of course, is Larkin Rose, and welcome back, that we're having a hate fest. And, you know, just to use the vernacular of the typical status, that when we're talking about freedom and things like this, uh, we're talking about liberty, we're talking about mutually voluntary agreements and interaction between people, that that is considered hate. And I want to point out too, and I'm trying to get this guy on the show, but I don't think it's going to happen. I can't remember his name, but he's got an actual website that go- it says government is good. And he's he, what do I've you seen have? that. I've seen that. It's yeah. He hasn't responded back to me yet, but I'm going to do my best to get him on the show. And what's 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 interesting about this guy is he doesn't look at someone like Larkin Rose or me or Stefan Molyneux or Lasanne or Spooner as being anti-government. What he is looking at are people like Rush Limbaugh as being anti-government because they go through the rhetoric of wanting lower taxes. And I pointed out, no, let's get one thing straight. Rush Limbaugh loves government. He is not anti-government any more than Ronald Reagan was, even though Ronald Reagan said government is not the solution to a problem. Government is the problem. You have to take that in context of what he was talking about. He was talking about a specific problem. He wasn't talking about government in general. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the issue with these so-called anti-government Republicans is not that they're anti-tax. They just want lower taxes. They are very much for taxes because they are in love with the military and the police, which can't do any wrong. I mean, they're pro-torture. And what do you think is paying the torturers? Uh, if you want to talk to someone who's anti-tax, you have to call up Larkin Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a call. Because and anti-government. And yeah. anti-government. See, because <laughs> we anarchists, agorists, the voluntarists, we are anti-violence. And because government is the initiation of the use of physical force or the threat of physical force in order to provide uh, pretended products and services, that goes against what we believe in. We believe it is wrong to initiate violence. It's wrong. You do not initiate violence or threaten the initiation of violence. We deem that that is wrong. Unfortunately, the people out there that are statists believe that that's okay if you disassociate yourself from the violence. That, um, well, it's not me, it's the government. But that somehow relieves them of personal responsibility. And what we spoke about a few shows back, uh, Harold Thomas is the myth of the innocent civilian. See, it doesn't work that way. You can put your head in the sand and you can ignore your personal responsibility, but that does not take the blood off your hands, does it, Larkin? Nope, nope, certainly doesn't. And the the fact that people can't, they uh, like, like you said, they completely disassociate from what happens, but they can't even recognize just literally the truth of what happens. Like, you know, all these people are all excited about Obama, yippee, yippee. And a bunch of people said, you know, even a bunch of statists said, we don't like him because he's a different kind of statist. And I and I and you guys and other people were saying, we don't like him because he advocates mass robbery and extortion and, and the violent control of innocent people. And if you condemn him, like, I condemn him. Obama is an evil person. He advocates mass robbery. You can't be a good person and advocate mass robbery. But that's called hate speech by people who want the mass robbery to be good and legitimate and okay and who don't like it when people resist. 
Um, right, we have to go to a break. Uh, that's why I hate these first segments. But we're going to get back into the hate speech and our little hate fest for the day. Uh, in just a few moments, my name is Mark Stevens, author of Adventures in Legal Land. The website, markstevens.net, which, of course, is maintained and run by Kurt Tischer, kurttischer.net. And our guest today is Mark. Yeah, Mark and Rose. We'll be back in just a few moments with our hate fest. Don't go away. You don't want to miss any of the hate and radicalism. Back to No State Project. I'm your host, Mark Stevens. This is the No State Project, of course, on American Freedom Radio, AmericanFreedomRadio.com. We are the only show on the air dedicated to bringing about a voluntary society. The whole aim of the show is to educate people on the true nature of government and why it needs to be abolished. Uh, not necessarily today, but we definitely want to speed up the process and have a gradual uh, uh abolition of all government and government meaning just one man controlling another man without his consent uh, or men and women providing a service of the barrel of a gun that they claim to be protecting life liberty and property but in actuality by their own admission they are not and so welcome back uh, Kurt and our guest uh, Larkin Rose we're talking about the hate speech that we're accused of that if if you actually uh, talk about freedom and whatnot. You're you're an extremist. You talk about hate speech. But what I want to read is, is just a, a short thing from How to Be a Successful Tyrant by uh, by Larkin Rose, of course. Even the connotation of the word anarchy is a symptom of su- of successful time honored fear mongering. The word itself has dual meanings: one, absence of government, and two, violent chaos. Using the same word to mean those two very different concepts carries the obvious implication: lack of government equals bloody mayhem. What a convenient bit of propaganda built right into the language itself. This would be akin to using one term to mean people who disagree with me and also to mean heartless baby killers. Who would want to use that term to describe themselves? Of course not. And and anarchy is something that's typically used when we start talking about the evils of government. Is uh, and we're, uh, so it, it makes sense why they see it as being uh, why they look at us or they look at anarchists as being uh, hateful. Right, and it's, you know, there are anarchists with lots of different views on the use of force. There are anarchist pacifists who think it's better to basically let them stomp on you so other people can learn. I'm not among them. There are others who think it's perfectly moral to defend yourself, although in a lot of cases it's kind of a bad idea on practical matters because you'll just get killed. Um, But among the spectrum of ideas of when you should use force to defend against tyranny, the all statists advocate the violence of the state, that, that government use force to, to rob people and control people. And they can't recognize that as violence, even when it's you know a SWAT team with machine guns kicking down somebody's door and killing them. They, even then, no, it's enforcing the law when I just, you know, someone just got blown to smithereens for having a plant that the politicians don't approve of. But they can instantly call it violence when somebody resists, when somebody says, I'm not going to let them do that to me, even if it's obviously self-defense against the state, because the statists have been completely convinced that government can do no wrong, because it's legal. It can't be bad, because it's legal. And if we shoot you legally, then you must have been a bad guy. Because if it's illegal to shoot you, you must be bad. <laughs> and that's that's why they can't see. That's why they instantly see anybody who resists tyranny as a nasty, horrible, violent terrorist, and can't recognize that government is always terrorism. It's always violence. It's always control via threat of force or the use of force, and they they can't see it. And it's just it's pathetic. Well, it depends on the context because you would be pretty hard-pressed to find somebody who would not 